testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm just continuing with uh, Carl Singlein's test uh, scripts, and I'm just adding to them, very similar to how I looked at processing with Daniel Schiffsman and just played with codes and kept adding them. Kids are a little wild in the background, but that's life. And what I've done is a pick and place here and just made a curve a little more interesting, a little more parametric as to how I can control it. Uh, thinking of it backwards, I'll break it into its parts uh, so it makes a little sense. And we'll go up here to this kind of what the robot is doing. Now, obviously, a conveyor belt or some type of release, and you see the KUKAs, this, this robot is banging into itself. But I'm not too concerned with that because it's, it's mainly just trying to understand the logistics of what a robot has to do to put things in place. So if miraculously there was, you know, a spawning brick here, this thing would technically pick it up and shift it and put it in place as we go. Um, so it's running that script. I've got the geometry of the brick on here I can highlight and the geometry of the robot and the motions to that. But I like to just look at the mesh of what I wear, where I want the brick to go. I put on this uh, Carl Singline contacted me uh, Thursday and said, you know, be careful with this uh, play loop. It doesn't always work. It's probably best to go through an animation of uh, zero to one to make sure it really works. But since I'm not playing with real robots, I really like this big one because then I always get a nice stretch, even though it bangs on its... Uh, uh, coming together. The tool is pretty simple. I was thinking like one of these suction tubes, uh, suction balls. Uh, so I just use a mesh because I know that's one of the kind of pickup devices that's used. You could use clamps, but basically I'm just building a geometry to simulate that. And then here's really the command weaver, which I think is a great tool to break your head into what's happening. And what Carl does is he outlines exactly what's happening in each one of these scripts. So eight, eight things are happening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, commands. And you're going above pickup go to pick up, start the vacuum, go above the pickup, go above the target, go down to the target, stop the vacuum, go to the target. So you're starting to break things down that way. And I've tried to keep it in order. So the first thing really is a duplicating a data command line for actually using a movement. And then you've got a linear movement that you've got to weave in there in between. And then you've got to come down here and use a set digital output, which is really like turn on the vacuum as a Boolean, true and false would be off. So true is on and false is off because there's another one down here, which is like the shut off to a tool. Uh, then you got to weave in this command line, which is another lifting, uh, moving a linear command, and then turning off a bit, and then I think popping in another one of these, uh, setting the distance, uh, safety distance above target. So that's kind of a weaving, and he tells you what it's going to do, and then on each one of these groups, he says exactly what it does. So really nice organization by Carl. That makes sense to me. And I chase it back to um, what that distance would be. Uh, I can alter that. I can make this move higher above the target or lower, asking it to do different things. And of course, once again, you know, I know, I know, any roboticist is probably just cringing or grinding their teeth as to what how loose I am and how careless I am about the robot. But like I said, it's an interesting way to build parametrically or simulate building parametrically. Even though many of us have built brick walls uh, with the tractor points and all these tractor curves. But once you start, and start like building Adobe structures and with brick and making things as a sculptor, it's kind of nice to think of these little visual displays, three-dimensional or four-dimensional displays of what's actually happening instead of stills. There's an orientation of putting and aligning points to another uh, plane uh, so it stays in order and then dividing the curves that I'm in use of. Uh, this is really the brick itself, which I can change the size and scale of it. I can thicken it. I can thin it. Uh, down and I can I can make it very thin in the side so I have parametric control over that and then I have a way of kind of offsetting this playing with the offset to the curl curve which is kind of nice as to where I pick up where the pickup point is and how that's affected uh, geometrically this is still kind of causing me a little confusion and then really over here I have a curve that was brought in this base curve but I'm just using a kind of staggering technique of uh, uh, whenever I change the actual output here it kind of moves that brick and I can also add to that or lower it or really jive it up. And then I have this ability to kind of move it and rotate it in connection with the other one. So I can do a full rotation and be like, okay, I'm going to stagger this and build a little wall within itself. So nice little geometric control. Nothing, you know, precise to building anything per se, uh, but really a fun way of thinking of stepping up. And then with anything in real life, you've got to add mortar. You've got to have the human hand in it. And I'm coming at robotics in a very, you know, physical way as to how I would make it. And once again, this is kind of flitting out on me and going a little nuts. I feel kind of bad for it. So maybe I'll have less red marks if I just set my cooker robot a little closer uh, into the center. I'll just bring this down to 1300 uh, 
uh, millimeters, I guess it is, or whatever feet, and then hopefully have a little less. But it's still struggling to get here, probably because it's it's actually really that main pickup point that's causing all the trouble. It seems as it comes back. But otherwise, it's a fun little exercise to really wrap your head around robotics and simulate it. Uh, put it through uh, a loop, and you can shorten and quicken that loop to really make it work quick. Uh, and you can also take this once again, which is where I'm going with it, if I want to kind of put my children into uh, uh, to work. Uh, maybe I'll show oh my gosh, I just ran it uh, pretty quick. It's not going to let me do anything. Because um, you're asking to do a lot of commands and a lot of calculations, but I think it's amazing how fast these plugins actually work. So it is trying to do what I say as it puts in all these bricks. I'm trying to estimate what I have, maybe I guess 13 on each row. 20 rows high, doubled 40, so it's just doing that multiplication. Um, and I need to stop messing with it. There it is. Uh, and then what I do in the end is I like to take these final bricks, and as I do on all my other uh, things, I like to sync them to syncing the parameters, and I also like syncing the objects. So if I wanted to, I could grab those bricks and put them in the AR and show exactly where those bricks have to be uh, through the Fologram tool, which I like to go to again. Um, and grab a QR code and bring those through my phone or on a HoloLens if I could actually afford one. I could take a QR code and have that into reality. And what's nice is you can also grab the mesh and the instructions and all the codes of uh, with a shift to the fullogram. So you're actually getting a, uh, a simulation in real time. Uh, of course, it's moving pretty slow in the fullogram for what I've asked it to do. Uh, and it's got a lot of calculations. So an exercise for, like I said, my kids to get into augmented reality play a little bit with robotics in their backyard at a young age safely and build and speculate and have fun and maybe become engineers and whatever their future entails. Anyway, I'll reset it um, to true. I'll take it off here and probably just put the, f I'll probably just deactivate uh, my fullogram for now. And I'll put a save in there, save document as this iteration as four, and we'll give it a little fullogram additive. So lots of these codes that are playing on, and I'll put them on my GitHub site if people are interested. But it's a little more, um, you know, Wickerson uh, foolish tomfoolery than curl singline precision and uh, entrusted with a lot more of the means of production at KUKA. Uh, I'm in here because it's, it's really a very exciting kind of way to play. All right. Thanks for watching.